Well, tonight's actually a very exciting uh, menu. And, uh, well, last week in the Spaghetti Western, we were looking at wave the first part of our wavetable synthesis class. And we were looking at massive, and we were understanding some of the concepts as far as how it kind of builds upon what we saw with subtractive synthesis, where it still uses filters and control signals and the traditional signal path of oscillators going into a filter and then being controlled by an amplifier envelope. Although it was much more sophisticated in the digital realm using massive um, and wavetable for that matter than what we saw inside the analog realm, um, it allows for different sonic possibilities. And we're gonna be tonight looking at the second part of the wavetable lesson. And this time what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be looking at X for Record Serum. And we're going to be looking at it in ways that I don't know if too many people here have ever had the opportunity to see it. But it's a, it's it's the newest addition to the, uh, well, other than the Ableton Wavetable Synthesizer. It's, it's uh, a later addition after Massive. And it kind of addresses a lot of the things that Massive didn't do. And it's, a, it's, you know, it's similar, but it's a different animal altogether. And one of the things that's very unique about what you can do with Serum, which is different from Wavetable or from massive is is that you can actually create your own wavetables out of recorded audio and you can do this with your voice you can do this with samples that you've taken you can even put other synthesizers into it to make wavetables out of what they're able to do so it's kind of allows for an infinite expandability as far as the sonic palette goes but the structure has like i said it has some similarities to what we've seen in massive but there are additional bells and whistles and like i said it came after after Massive. So, you know, there were a whole list of things that everybody wanted Native Instruments to do that they didn't do, which, by the way, I hear they're coming out with a new Massive 2.0. Has anybody seen this? No? I thought I saw an email the other day about this. Um, they mentioned it. They announced it. I haven't played with it, and I don't know exactly what it does. Uh, I would imagine that it probably must do many of the things that it didn't do that spawned Serum. Um, but I guess we shall see. I hope everybody had a great week. And uh, do you have any questions, Danny? Did that answer? Uh, not yet, you? but I know I will. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to share my screen so that we can jump right into this. And I've gone ahead and everybody sees my screen now. Yes. Okay. All right, let's just do a quick audio check. Yes, we all hear the drums and everything. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pull up Serum. And this is the latest version which actually lets you scale the interface to make it nice and large however you want it. One of the other things too with it is, is that we can also utilize different skins for Serum. So we can change up the way that the whole thing looks. And uh, if you don't have the latest version of this, this is, I. Don't even know if they have it as an official release. I think it's I uh, I think it's a beta that they're they're doing this with. Um, they just haven't called the official release. But uh, let me go ahead and set the default skin here. And basically, let's just do a flyby of what the interface works like. It's designed to be very, very simple. Rather than having three independent wavetable oscillators the way that Massive does, it has two wavetable oscillators, but it also has a sub-oscillator, which constitutes as the third oscillator. One of the things that you'll notice about Serum, and one of the things that people really seem to like about it very, very much, is the fact that it has this, this very dazzling type of display. So the way that it works is that we go ahead and we load in a wavetable. I'm going to go to uh, Digital Wavetables, and I'm going to go to this Evil Longrease. And if I click on the middle of the display, it actually flips over and shows what the actual wavetable looks like. So this is what Wolfgang Palm had done his sketches as, as far as what the wavetable idea was. That basically you would have this table of waveforms that you could then use a position control to sweep through. And I'm going to go ahead and drop the octave range. And then we can use a modulator to control how it moves through any particular control. And it works just like it does inside Massive. So I'm gonna take the envelope and drop it here to the wavetable position. I'm gonna pull this back, and then I'm gonna make it go up 
and then back down again. So let's pull the sustain level down. And now it's going to move through the wavetable and probably not exactly how I want it, but it's gonna move through it. Okay, so just like inside Massive, and one of the things I had said, you know, last week when I was teaching is, is that, you know, one of the one of the most valuable and important things you can do to a wavetable is be able to distort it and alter it and change the way that it is. Otherwise, you're just using the stock wavetable. So, at the oscillator level, Serum allows us to run a number of different processes over the wavetable. I'm going to go here to Mirror, and some of the displays options. There's two different display options. You can see either, either the three dimensional. Um, wavetable plane, or you can see what the waveform looks like. So basically, when we use mirror, we're seeing that it looks like, you know, it shows us the display in the in the 2D form. Um, we actually see what it's doing. And it's fun to have multiple things move at the same time. So I'm going to take an LFO and drop it here to the mirror control. And basically, one of the things that you'll see going on here is the fact that it's only moving in one direction with the LFO, meaning that it's going up. I may want it to go bi-directional so that it goes back and forth below the center point. So there are four pages inside Serum to be aware of. There's the oscillator page, the effects page, the matrix page, which shows us all of the patch points. And when we scroll over here to type, type allows us to choose what type of directional control this is. So either it's going to be a bipolar or a unipolar control. So now that I've got it set to bipolar, you'll see that basically the center position has modulation going above and below it. Now, one of the cool things with Serum is the fact that I can use Unison at the oscillator level. Inside Massive, I had to use it globally over the entire synth engine. So basically what this allows for is, is that I can have some sounds that sound more narrow and some sounds that sound more wide all within the same patch. So I've just engaged the sub oscillator. And the reason why I put the sub oscillator in is because Wavetable generally sounds very digital and can sound very thin. So it loses the tonal center a lot of times when, when this happens. So the sub oscillator is there as a reinforcement to basically keep the actual tonality and the pitch of the sound. So I'm going to go ahead and set this to monophonic, and I'm going to go ahead and engage oscillator B as well. And this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to find something that is contrasting with this. Maybe I'll take a uh, vowel. I have mine fully expanded with all of the different wavetables from the Access Virus, the uh, Korg MS-2000, the um, Waves Codex synthesizer, wavetable synthesizer, and uh, a bunch of other things all along the path here. But these are all, you know, off of the free World Wide Web that we're all party to that uh, you can pull and download and put in the specific folders. Uh, so what I'm going to do is maybe I'll, nah, nah, this would, this is in bad taste. I'm not going to take Massive's wavetables and use them for this. Um, I'm going to take a spectral waveform. And I'm going to go to uh, mm, 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 Trilobite. And again, these types of sounds sometimes become difficult to hear when we have a lot of things going on. So I just silenced out the other two oscillators, the sub and the uh, and oscillator A. Now again, I can do different distortion at this wavetable level. If I click here just so that we can see what the wavetable looks like, there's a ton of different frames. Frames is what we understand as the actual snapshots along the wavetable, and you'll see that it shows you the number of frames leading up to 256 for each one, which you see over here in the right-hand corner. So some wavetables may have more, some wavetables may have less. And the idea with this is that I don't want to necessarily have something complex and moving here. I already have something complex and moving for the mid-range. So what I want to do is I want to make for some sort of a whine kind of a sound here with this. So I think that this will be suitable. I also can do different forms of distortion to the wavetable as well. Now, one of the cool things that we liked very much from working with Massive was is that we used the phase mod oscillator. 
uh, control. And the phase mod basically is another term for FM synthesis. So instead of finding phase modulation inside Serum's list of distortions, we have FM synthesis. And we can choose a source, be there being from oscillator A, the noise oscillator, or the sub oscillator. And I'm going to choose the sub oscillator because the sub oscillator is doing a nice pure sine wave. And this actually makes for the best type of waveform to use as a source for FMing. Now, Wavetable is very, very powerful, and there's so many different things that we can do with it. You know, we have all of these different control signals that we can use, such as envelopes and LFOs and step sequencers, but one of the most important things that we have to remember with programming any types of sounds is that the real magic when we, appro re when we approach these sounds and we go back to play them is, is, is the expression controls that, are, that we've mapped or that are part of the control. And by expression controls, I mean velocity, note position, mod wheel, aftertouch, different things that are gonna be reactive to the way that we touch the keyboard. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a mapping here that's gonna basically make it so that different notes that I play along the keyboard are going to change to different positions on the wavetable. So if I play this. And the FM can be set to a velocity control here so that it's basically going to allow for just a little bit more bite the harder that I strike on the keys. So it's not that difficult to get some really exciting sounds coming up inside Serum. And one of the Achilles heels with it actually, even though I've shown you these great things now as far as how great it is, it only has one filter in it where Massive had two filters. And the one filter only allows us to do serial type filtering things, meaning that we can't make these big what I call multi-dimensional sounds where it sounds like we have layers going on because part of the oscillators are going through one filter and another part of the oscillators are going through another filter. So we have one filter, but the filters that are inside Serum are killer. And there are some very unique ones. We have the usual fodder as far as low pass, band pass, high pass, peak and notch. There are morphing filters. There are flange type filters like um, based off of comb filtering and flanging and phasing. But the miscellaneous filters is really where I get very interested in this stuff. And there's this one unique one here that I'll point out to you that may, you may or may not have checked out. It's called Reverb. And I don't know what it does, but it does some really nice stuff. So And one of my favorite things about the filters is, is that most of them contain a drive control true to the way that an analog filter would. So you can really get some nice variations. It's not just the sound going through the filter. It's the filter being driven, taken to a sweet spot, kind of like dealing with saturation plugins when you're mixing. Now, one of the things that you may see missing or may think is omitted from Serum as compared to the way that Massive worked was is that Massive had this wonderful step sequencer that we could use that would basically allow us to hit a key and things would start running and jumping around. Well, the LFO is incredibly versatile inside Serum. And what we can do is set the resolution to whatever we want it to be. I'm sorry, for the grid here, we set it to however many steps we want it to be. I'm gonna set it to, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it at eighth notes is where I'm gonna leave it. And if I hold down the option key, I believe, or what is it, what key is it that does this? 
it's the shift key. I can basically draw in steps and make step sequencers out of the LFO. Now I can make combinations of sliding steps as well as just abrupt steps for this. I'll leave the last one a sliding step. So now what I can do with this is I can go ahead and move it along to the filter cutoff control. So there are a whole slew of different effects on board. One of the things that I usually look at when I look at the onboard effects inside a synthesizer are the distortion capabilities. Um, and there's a variety of different distortions that can be applied to the sound as well. It's not quite the same as when we did it inside Massive where we had the distortion at the tail end of the filter, then we had global effects. These are more global effects over everything, but they're still very good. So I'm going to go ahead and choose this asymmetrical distortion and basically uh... and one of the more popular effects inside massive that I didn't go to last week that uh, you know, is definitely worth mentioning is the dimensional expander. And if you've used Massive, you've definitely used it. Um, it's a really funny thing because the manual doesn't really describe what it is. They, it's, believe it or not, the manual says that, you know, it was done by the DSP engineer. We don't exactly know what it is, but we think it's an amazing effect. And we love it, so you should love it too. And, uh, you know, it's really not that hard to figure out what it's doing. It's doing a very, very, very short room reverb with no tail. So basically, there's a little bit of a, uh, a, a pre-delay uh, pre on it as well. So there's just a slight little distance before it hits the first reflection, and then there's no reverberation after that. And what it does is it makes the sound sound bigger and makes it sound a little bit more present. So Serum actually has its own version of the Dimensional Expander. They have two parts to it, though. They have this thing called Hyper, which basically will take that initial reflection and set it to a unison mode where we don't necessarily want to do that. We want to leave that alone. We just want to be able to control the size and the mix the same way that we do it inside Massive. See, no tail on the whole thing. I'm right though, Danny, right? Yes. Okay, so, so, it's something you could make if you set the parameters right on any type of reverb. Um, it's nothing, you know, it's just what it is, is it's, it's kind of like uh, spoon fed to you inside these systems that yes, this is the exact type of effect you would want to use at certain points in time. So it's become popular. So I, di I wasn't entirely true about this whole scenario with there being one filter inside Serum. There's actually two filters and this doesn't allow for a parallel type scheme. It allows for a um, serial type connection. So basically the two filters are connected in series to each other. So in certain situations, there might be a point where I've used a more colorful type of filter, like the reverb filter, and it's doing some things that, you know, might be cool. And I want to use a more traditional filter on the output. One of the cool things that not everybody knows is, is that you can actually use the modulation controls for any of the effects inside Serum as well. So it doesn't just relate to the synthesis engine. So I've just gone ahead and taken another LFO here. And what I want to do with this one is I want to make it a sawtooth up and <laughs> Now, one of the cool things here too is, is that second order modulation is all over the place inside Serum. So I'm going to go back to this note position and I'm going to go ahead and drag it to the LFO rate now. So that basically different positions on the keyboard are going to produce different LFO rates. <laughs> Bye.
Okay, so that's your crash course in serum as far as the easy stuff goes with this. It's really, it's it's a really fun synthesizer and it's very, very powerful. And it's I'd say that this is pretty much the epitome of what, you know, the dream wavetable synthesizer is at this point in time. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go here and I'm going to initialize my preset. Actually, you know what? No, we'll leave this one alone. We'll just save it as a... Uh, you know, a trophy of tonight's class, just as, you know, I like to save a file of each class that I do as I go along here with this, just, uh, you know, to kind of keep track of some of the sounds that I've made. So I'm going to go ahead and choose a new instance of Serum, and this one will be a knit when I open it up. And this is where things start to get really, really exciting.